So here we are at Ilsonka Auto Camp in Moravia, Czech Republic. And my van is a converted transporter 6.1 imported from Germany. It is the Silt Camper, which has a quite intriguing internal layout and uh, pop-up roof, as you can see. And I added a rooftop solar panel and an awning. So setup takes me about 10 minutes usually. And as you can see from the skies, this was a cold day. The very end of September, the end of the season, the site is one of those sites where it has a lot of permanent caravans and everybody was basically taking down awnings and uh, readying for the closed season. And I decided to go do overnight camp in this location. So this is the setup of my van. Oops. I have to be a little careful with the awning because if I don't set it up quite right the front passenger door um, scrapes on the frame of the awning which I guess um, no one told me about until it happened so I have to be pretty careful and make sure that um, you can open the door once I've got the awning up. Other than that it works like a treat. And once I've got my table and chair out um, everything's perfect. For the first time this year, I bought an electrical hookup so that I could use a couple of additional features on the van that normally I don't bother with, as you'll see shortly. There we go, all set up. Don't you look pretty? Plugged into the power, all set to go. But first, let's have a look at the campsite. It's actually situated on this lake. It's just north of the nuclear power plant, situated at Dukovani. And these white rocks here, I think it's called Wilson's Rock or something along those lines. But plainly, um, this is quite a sizable lake. It actually has electric boats, ferries shuttling up and down the lake and uh, little jetties that you can step on and step off at and a nice walk around the edge of the lake um, where I wanted to look at the geology and take a few rock samples just for fun.
And once I'd had a good look around and stretched the legs a bit, it was time to head back to the van and watch the whole City game, which I was able to do by using my phone as an internet connection and set up my iPad so I could watch the game on one hand and look at the pretty view on the other. It's an interesting sight because of all these uh, permanent caravans, it's a bit of a mess. So I'm plugged into the mains, and because I'm plugged into the mains, I have hot water. And I have this electric kettle that I can use when I'm plugged into the mains. It speeds everything up, but it's really nice to have hot water coming from the sink. But I can only have hot water when I'm plugged into the mains. So I'm solo camping this weekend in the van. Today I just um, I drove out here. It's a nice location. I've never been at this site before. Not sure it's a site that I really would have come back to, but it's nice. Nice views. And I had lunch in the uh, shop, the restaurant here. I had schnitzel and mashed potato. And now I'm just making some spam for a spam sandwich for dinner. I'll have a cup of tea. And then I might just wander back to the restaurant and see if there's a beer. And in the morning, I intend to do a couple of three hours dowsing because the, um, the Temple of Line passes somewhere, somewhere around here, I know for sure. And I'd like to add a few more spots. Meanwhile, I think I have a few more things to show you in the van that only happen when I'm able to plug into the power, which I normally don't bother doing because why would I? I have a solar panel, I'm self-sufficient. But hot water and being able to use an electric kettle sometimes, sometimes seem appealing. Also, it's a little bit chilly, so I do have the heating running. And hopefully it will run all night. Diesel heating, very nice. Let's give this a try. Yum. <laughs> Hot. Mmm. Mmm. Good, good. Camping food. Nothing better. Of course. Nothing with that ketchup, right? <laughs> It's quite a luxury, actually, having an um, electric kettle that works, rather than having to heat on the stove. It looks like my gas is beginning to run low. Fortunately, um, I always carry a, a standalone gas cooker that I can use outside just in case. And it looks like I'll have to uh, refill the gas bottle shortly. This uh, campsite isn't that bad. Um, the thing is, is it's just got all of these caravans that are here all summer. And it reminds me a bit of, um, you know, like a van site in Withensea or somewhere on the east coast of England, especially with it being on a lakeside. It's got boats, it's got uh, plenty to do in the summer, but on a rainy evening like tonight, it's, um, it's a tad depressing in the sense that it's the end of the season and everybody's packing up their belongings and wrapping their caravans in cling film, I guess winterising them that way. Um, I won't be winterising my van for another month or two because um, I like to keep using it as long as I possibly can. And so long as there's a place to stop, I'll stop. Um, it won't get that cold until November. Anyway, I'm going to make a cup of tea. Cheers. <laughs> Morning. I think that was probably the best sleep I've had in this van. Um, I slept for like 10 hours. I had the heating on, still got the heating on. It's warm as a, warm and as snug as a bug in a rug. Some idiot was playing very loud music around 10 o'clock, but it um, didn't bother me very much. And I just uh, slept until, um, what is it? Eight o'clock, pretty good. The best sleep I've ever had in a van. 
I look a bit rough, but then I do in the mornings. Time for some coffee. Breakfast outside. It's a beautiful morning. Trying to dry the awning off in the wind and the sun. It rained quite a lot during the night. Well, thanks for joining me on this overnight camping trip at the end of the season. Hope you enjoyed seeing the van in action. And uh, please do join me again. Please do subscribe, like, share. It really helps. Bye.